Hi, I'm Pam and welcome back to my channel. I know that I've not been on YouTube for a little while. There has been some sadness in my family and my extended family and I just wasn't up to making videos. I had a lot of other things going on and other things on my mind. So making videos was kind of at the bottom of the list, but life goes on. We're all moving forward and I wanted to share with you some of my more recent purchases from Gray Barn Antiques in Andover, New Jersey. And I wanted to share with you a few updates that I've made here in my 1934 cottage in Northern Nevada. So let's start with the items from Gray Barn Antiques. Obviously, I'm not going to be running over to Gray Barn in person to shop, seeing as they're located in New Jersey and I'm here in Nevada. However, they do have weekly Facebook Live sales, which is where I have uh, received a lot of my items. And also Jeanette over at Gray Barn posts vignettes on Facebook and also on YouTube quite frequently. And that's another way that you can purchase items from that shop if you are not in the Andover, New Jersey area. And before you ask, no, Gray Barn does not sponsor my videos. I have known Jeanette since we were freshmen in high school and I have known her husband Don since the two of them got together all those years ago. So Jeanette, one of my very, 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 very best friends. I love to patronize her shop. I was a vendor there for a couple of years while I was still living on the East Coast. So love the fact that I can still be a part of the Gray Barn family by watching Jeanette doing her live videos and purchasing the items that I see that speak to me and I feel would be a fit for my home. So let's go ahead and get started. I can't even remember what I bought. It's been a while. Oh, they do an amazing job at packaging these items for shipping. And the first item that we have here is a vintage cookbook, fondue, chafing dish, and casserole cookery. Copyright 1969 by Margaret Deeds Murphy. And this cookbook has a lot of obviously fondue recipes. One of my cats keeps trying to eat the packing peanuts, so I'm having to clean up as I go along. Chafing dishes were very popular in the 1950s and 60s. Women were still evolving as far as going out of the home to work, maybe not having as much household help. And so if you wanted a hot buffet, but you didn't have a maid to serve it for you, chafing dishes were a great alternative. You simply set everything out on your table. You light the little sterno underneath the chafing dish and kept your items hot for your guests. And there were a lot of chafing dishes recipes uh, back in the 1950s and 60s. So looking forward to diving into this book. Additionally, as you know, I collect vintage and antique cookbooks. It's one of my things. I did get another version of the Fanny Farmer cookbook. And this one goes back to 1951, the Boston Cooking School new Fanny Farmer cookbook. I have, this, this makes my third or fourth edition of Fanny Farmer. can't remember. I'm going to have to go back and look at my collection, but super excited about this as well. Adding it to my collection, a book in German. I am of German descent. I started learning German in middle school and then I moved in the middle of middle school and my new school system didn't offer it. So I switched to Spanish, tried again in college, but didn't really apply myself. So one of these days, right? One of these days, uh, so a cute little book in German, and of course it's got that fancy German font. I'm not even sure that I could, can read it. 
I'm not even going to try. I'm not going to butcher it. So cute little item to add to my displays. That's box number one. Box number two. Oh good, this one doesn't have any packing peanuts, so I don't have anything to clean up. I love hanging things on my walls. I love pictures. And when I first moved in, it took me a really long time to get to the point where I felt that I could hang things up on my walls with painting and everything. So um, another one for my collection. When I bought this on the Facebook Live, Jeanette said that she wasn't surprised that I bid on it because I just love vintage prints of old buildings, especially if they look like they're from England. And I'm not, not really sure where this is from. The artist is A.H. Richards. So I will have to look up who A.H. Richards is. I'm going to probably hang this in my hallway near a couple of other vintage prints of old buildings that I have in there. Looking forward to that. It's absolutely adorable. Okay, final box. I know that this item has one item that I purchased, which I believe was yet another picture from my wall. And I'm trying to remember, it's been a little while. And also I do have a birthday coming up. I'm not going to tell you how old I am. I'm not one of those people who lies about my age, but I don't know that I need to put my age out on YouTube. So I'll leave it to you to guess how old I am and how old I'm about to be. So let's see what's in here. This is the picture that I purchased. Jeanette actually reached out to me and said, I have this picture, I think it's your style, are you interested in buying it? I saw it and I said, yes, send it to me. The caption says, her favorite him, H-I-M. Great vintage print, looks like, um, I'm guessing 30s or 40s vibe here. Uh, two folks at the piano and she's gazing adoringly at the man behind the piano. So I'm not sure where this will go, but it will find the perfect spot here in my house. And now the next item is the birthday surprise. So we're gonna find out together what it is. Jeanette said, wait until you see. that is. Okay, it is some sort of canister because, oh, I, oh my gosh. Oh wow, I know already. <laughs> Just by seeing the lid. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow, wow. I think this is the first time I've ever opened up a gift on camera other than maybe years ago when people used to videotape Christmas and stuff all the time with their big video recorders. Holy cow. This, oh, this is amazing. Jeanette, wow, I can't believe it. This is a haul for Westinghouse container, right? These were called refrigerator dishes. And this one in particular has a little caddy. A little, ca holy cow, I've not seen the caddy. So for those of you who don't know, Westinghouse back in the 40s had a promotion going on where if you buy one of their refrigerators, you would get a free refrigerator dish, right? And you could keep your leftovers or whatever. And there were different color schemes. Um, I have quite a few of the yellow. I have, um, I also have some blue and some green. Um, so this is a haul by Westinghouse refrigerator dish. Westinghouse commissioned hall pottery to make these for them. 
Wow, I'm so excited. That That is just amazing. Jeanette, thank you so much. She knows me so well, right? She knows that I've been collecting haul um, for the last couple of years. Also at Gray Barn, they have the Gray Barn General Store where they sell candies, other goodies. And so she sent me some vintage candies that they sell, Smarties, as well as a Flake candy bar. These are from the UK. You don't usually find these here in America unless you go to a specialty shop. And then she also included <laughs> um, Golden Girls Mints. I got Dorothy's. Dorothy's Enlightenments. Take one before sleep, sweetheart, and pray for brains. <laughs> I love it. I am a Golden Girls fan as well. Oh, I, I won't share that. That's a little private joke. <laughs> but I will share this. Finally, Food Economy. Oh, it's a little booklet. Food Economy Recipes for Leftovers, Plain Desserts, and Salads by Mrs. Knox. How adorable is that? And let's see if there's a year in here. Oh, I do not see a year, but I'm going to guess 40s or 50s. And obviously it's for using Knox gelatin uh, to create all sorts of surprises for your loved ones and your guests using Knox gelatin, of course, making aspics and all that sort of thing was really, really big in the 1940s, 50s, and even the 60s, and started to die out in the 70s. So thank you, Jeanette. Wow. When you said, wait until you see what I got you, you weren't kidding. This is absolutely amazing. Thank you so, so much. So now we're going to take a few minutes and I'm going to bring you around the house and show you a few updates that I have made in the last few months. I've been very, very busy. I still have so much more to do, but I have made some headway and I'd like to share that with you now. As you can see, I have painted my master bedroom and yes, I went with pink. Pink has really been growing on me over the last couple of years. I know it's not for everyone. I wasn't sure about the pink on pink curtains and the walls, but a couple of friends saw photos and they validated my choice. And so I went with it. Additionally, I pulled out the horrible brown wall-to-wall -wall carpeting that was in there. I have no idea how long it had been there, but when I pulled it up, there was all sorts of dirt and other yuck underneath. And so even though the hardwood floors in that room are in sort of rough shape, I feel that pulling that out and placing a nice pink area rug in there was absolutely the right decision to make. All of the painting that you see anywhere in my home was done strictly with a paintbrush. I did try using a roller, but on the plaster walls, I was not getting the co coverage that I wanted. And so everything was done with a paintbrush and I have the tennis elbow to prove it. One of the other things that I did in the master bedroom was to switch out all of the light and outlet plates for these brass ones. I think they're absolutely beautiful. My plan is to use the same plates in all of the rooms in my house going forward. In the master bedroom, I still have a few more pictures that I want to put up and I do need to attach the mirrors that go with the dresser and the dressing table. So more details yet to be accomplished in there. I also painted my office. I am using the third bedroom as my office space. And because I spend a lot of time in this room, I'm in here 40 hours a week, sometimes more. So I went with a really soothing green. A friend of mine described it as a chai tea color. Whatever it is, it's very pleasant, very relaxing, and it makes me enjoy being in this room. And 
I did a little bit of furniture rearranging. I'm one of those people who's constantly moving things. Furniture, uh, decor, pictures, whatever it is, I'm always moving it to see if I can get a better flow and get a better feel. And moving the sofa from the wall against the hallway to underneath the window gave it a much better flow. As you can see, there are two doorways that come into this room. There is the doorway that goes into the hallway and the doorway that goes into the utility slash kitchen room area. And just dodging around that couch was really getting annoying. So definitely a better flow. I still have my, what I like to call the Ronald McDonald light fixture in this room. This was here when I moved in. It was probably being used as a child's room with those primary colors. The fan works great, but I just am not a big fan of the fixture. So eventually that's going to get swapped out. Floors in here also in really rough shape. So I need to either get them redone or maybe put a better carpet in something needs to be done so there's a lot yet to do and yet there has been a lot accomplished in a short amount of time. Finally I wanted to share with you a couple of other exciting purchases that I made locally. The first being this absolutely pristine vintage print 1920s Daybreak by Maxfield Parish. It was inspired by the landscape of Vermont and New Hampshire and it's regarded as the most popular art print of the 20th century based on the number of prints made, one for every four American homes. And I got a copy of it and I am just thrilled. It is now hanging in my living room. The second I found at our local antique store. It is another landscape. I love landscapes and I had my eye on this one for a while. And I just got to the point where I figured I'd better grab it before someone else did. And it is now hanging in my dining room above my Victorian buffet. Thanks again for joining me here at Pam Speakeasy. If you like my content, please be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and share it with anyone who you think might be interested in what I have to offer here. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.